For the month of July 2022, we have two different aspects. The second of which I'm going to leave till August because it paints a rather interesting picture and for a change we don't have to be on YouTube for it. Yes, we're going to the Instagram Q&As. So for the month of July, Anne Boleyn started, ended, started, ended, and started a number of series. As many of you will undoubtedly know from the many years she's been on YouTube, she likes to run them the length of something that doesn't get the back nine, i.e. 13 episodes at most, or akin to that of a UK version of a series or season, depending on your interpretation of the two words for a television show that has a number of episodes per season or series. During these, Anne Boleyn will be semi-motivated to try and achieve a goal. Amber's goal, well, Amber's goal is an interesting one because Amber's goal, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a head scratcher. There's logic to this one, everyone. Would you like to hear that logic? Hey guys, welcome to a new series. <laughs> so welcome to 500 pound girl. So I am ahead on filming. So as you guys know, the, the most weight that I have ever lost at once has been 89 pounds it's like whenever i get close something happens so as you guys know i bought the hello it's ready scale it makes me four to six pounds lighter the series is me counting my calories showing you guys what i eat every single day and doing daily weigh-ins until i reach 100 pounds down within that spliced together bit i've showed you which was actually the second video in the list of videos i have pulled for you to watch there are a couple points worth addressing. The first, Amber did make a big deal of losing 89 pounds. Many times over the years, in fact, it has become her safety net to prove she can lose some weight. The problem is, to maintain that weight loss, you don't then blow up the additional 89 pounds like you usually do. To then go back down to go back up, this is not good for your system at all. The second point, you mentioned newer scales that make you four to six pounds lighter, so you're going to go with your older scales that cost quite a lot and you were very happy with. Creature of habit, shocker. And the third point, right at the end you mentioned what you're going to do in this brand new series. The exact same thing you have done for years. With no discernible change or deviation, although I'll give you some credit, for the month of July and onwards, your videos are longer like you said they would be in a poll where everyone asked for more frequent uploads at over 20 minutes. You seem to be on track on that part. Now to go back to the first video that Amber released for the month of July, Amber put out a video titled, This is not a weight loss series, What I Ate Today, Episode 5. Don't worry, it ended on episode 10 with a fantastic season finale, which was absolute bollocks and why it got cancelled after season one is a mystery because her views were doing reasonably well not as well as those that dunk on her on a daily basis but well enough hello you guys welcome to day five i have not weighed myself yet so i have to take off my clothes so you can't see it happen but alrighty, it's not good i haven't exactly been trying my best so that is unfortunate. Did anyone notice that Anne Boleyn had put on potentially 0.8 of a pound when she weighed herself in? Yeah. I also love the more flippant nature of her trying to fob off the fact that she's not really making a concerted effort. Then again, since she's basically apartment, home, condo, penthouse bound, in the sense that she rarely goes outside anymore, it's not a surprise. She just binges and does scratch art and pretends to read books. So if she wants me to get this book and she wants me to try reading it, then I'm going to do it. But I feel like it kind of is going against what I'm trying to do here, like by counting calories and such. But you know what? It's all going to come together. We're, we're going to figure it out. Because as is well established, counting calories has done marvels for you in the past. Now, Amber does go through that book, telling us about it along with another book. To me, it came across as somebody who had read the synopsis online along with the meaning of it. Mostly because the spines on those books hadn't been cracked, but that was just an observation I made. So calories is what I'm focused on today. Okay, so I'm about to show you how much pepper I add to this. <laughs> I promise you it's good. Would you like a fun fact? Of course you would. The majority of the meals that Amberlynn Reed likes to consume have phenomenal amounts of sodium in. For example, this instant lunch chicken flavor Maruchan contains 51% of your daily sodium intake and 30% of your saturated fat. The sodium thing though became a running gag for the research I was doing on Moisky Live because some of the meals you consumed during this month were over 100%. 
and that was before in some instances you added more salt so i decided that i'm gonna start reading like even just a couple pages of this um oh wow wait there's a lot of sections i was not expecting that um so some of the examples the trap of mindful eating will i be eating this much forever in defense of salt but really what if i have health problems emotional eating versus binging i'm gonna like that um wow what is this oh pluviophile oh it's a poem that i wrote when one goes seeking confirmation bias they will undoubtedly fumble stumble and eventually come across it i'd also recommend if you're going to read anything about diet and health and things like that don't think for a second you're going to enjoy it because some of it may be difficult to process or you won't process it at all and instead just say well my method works anyway so i'm just not going to do this anymore even though for the month of July, you really are sucking off your psychiatrist, psychologist, whoever it is. So let's now move on to the newest series Anne Boleyn Reed did for the month of July, as this one was just as embarrassing as the last one, but does demonstrate quite handily how the cycle never truly ends. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode eight. I thought we would have been making better progress by now, but I'm up 0.4 from yesterday, so I weighed in today at 486.2. Well, at least you're still down 9.4 pounds from the last weigh-in I showed in this particular segment. I'm flirting with the idea of ordering seafood boil. It's something I've been craving, like, pretty hardcore. I think if I do get seafood boil today, my goal is to just like have it throughout the day. I have eight. I'm just going to show you pictures from online because I didn't take pictures, didn't film it. I have had PF Chang's. I always get the Kung Pao chicken whenever I order from there. I did ask for white rice. They gave me fried rice instead. It was all right. Add a little bit of soy sauce to it. Enjoyed it. Would anyone like to guess the sodium percentage daily recommended intake for Kung Pao chicken from PF Chang's? It's 60%. Cholesterol is 40%. Total fat, 89%. I literally just ate this about an hour ago, a cup of noodle. For the sake of the sodium intake, because this is always a regular running gag, do I need to show this again? It's about 10 days later after the last clip you just saw. A lot has happened in the last 10 days. You know, it would be easy for me to come on here and just continue on and I am here. It's been weird not to film for the last 10 days because I was doing it daily. I just stopped because I did binge. I continued to binge and I haven't been able to find myself since then. You know that thing where most of your video logs you talk about how supportive your girlfriend is and how sometimes she'll put you on the straight and narrow. She'll stop you from falling as frequently as you used to fall. When you were with Becky, of course, who you've been dunking on throughout the entire month of July via Instagram Q&As. Yes, we'll get to those in August because there's more of them then. This is further proof that the honeymoon period between you two is coming to an end and your stupidity knows no bounds because you can't seem to justify any of it. That's not to say there is any justification, you just fob it off. Another minor obstacle in the never-ending hurdle that is Amberlynn Reed's weight loss journey, where no matter how hard you claim to try, you make no actual effort at all. So July is a rinse repeat of June, which is a rinse repeat of May, and so on and so on, until you get back to the very first video you ever posted on your weight loss channel, journey, adventure. The final video we are now going to take a look at concerns the last video she uploaded for the month of July. Vlog number one, a rebranding. How incredibly exciting. What? I, I cannot turn on a camera and just talk about myself. I'm sure many of you noticed two separate discrepancies there. First, the video was originally made towards the middle of the month, yet it was uploaded at the end of the month. The second, Amberlynn Reed struggling to talk about herself. How peculiar. There's no other way to explain it besides that. I don't know. Okay, the lighting is making me look unwell. So we have a grocery haul. My apartment, I don't, I don't like the lighting. I mean, for like a normal person, but not for a vlogger. So I'm actually thinking about starting this book finally. Oh, I've heard there's so many trigger warnings. For someone that makes the kind of money you do, I'm surprised you don't invest in YouTuber lighting. By the way, I didn't include the video of you making coffee, which had more sugar in than a bag of sugar. Nor did I include the remainder of your grocery haul because all of it was quite dull. Or the fact you had YP hold the camera while you put food into those Pyrex dishes from your grocery haul. I know, peak excitement. 
And yes, the lighting may look you ill because it accentuates your already ill natural features. On to August and the Instagram Q&As. I love these question and answer sessions, but they just get her in so much trouble because people are just way too invested in her life. I enjoy them. Like, I wish people would ask, like, real questions that matter. Instead, the last one, we get stuff like, how's the honeymoon phase? Is it over? Uh, so I don't know what she's going to answer today, but we'll see. So first things first, we're going to have to go through what happened concerning the Instagram Q&As because there's some fallout to it. Because Amber, as stated there from Gaining Ground, has a reputation for putting her foot in her mouth, which is the only time it ever reaches. Before we get on with what she did for the rest of her month, before, during, and after, I am going to be using clips from other channels, and I will be linking those in the pinned comment down below. Someone asked about her cancer journey, and stupid Amberin gave a stupidest, most outrageous answer ever. Do you think your cancer journey would have been different if you were with your current girlfriend? I would have went to the doctor sooner. I wouldn't have ever waited till I was bleeding to death to be rushed to the ER. This video comes from Orange Queen. By all means, go check her out. The fun fact is, if anyone has followed Amber Lynn Reed for any period of time, you'd know this is utter horse crap. Amber had never been to a gynecologist before this. Amber has admitted she is terrified of doctors. Amber has changed doctors with a click of her finger. Hoof, click of her hoof. She has never really made a concerted effort to maintain herself. And certainly back then, she was reliant on one person to keep her alive and keep her moderately hygienic. That person is the very person she dunked on. Are you insinuating that it's Becky's fault that you didn't go to the doctor's sooner pre-cancer? She didn't seem concerned, which made it to where I was less concerned than I should have been. I'm pretty sure we talked about this on a live stream, but she didn't even want to take me to the ER the night I was bleeding to death. She admits that it was wrong of her, and I accepted her apology, and I have zero resentment. But my girlfriend now would have literally forced me into the gynecology office, even if I was bleeding for more than two months, let alone almost three years. Sometimes your surroundings and environment play a big role in a situation like this. Just remember to advocate for yourself, because I didn't till I finally did, and it was almost too late. It's up to you to save yourself. No one else. At that point in your life, you were 30 years old and the head of the table of that household. The four of you that lived within the house, you know, Eric, Eric's Bish, Becky, your Bish, of course, and yourself. You were the top earner and you were the loudest voice. I'm not surprised Becky didn't say anything because you always have a type and they are always more submissive. Ultimately, the buck stops with you, not them. You blaming her is a really bad look for you. She literally took Becky to Cheesecake Factory at 6 a.m., so I doubt that Becky had the power to say no to you. Even if this was true, it was probably because Amberlynn exaggerates everything and she is always at the er, uh, so Becky probably thought it is just Amberlynn being herself. Now this is where it all gets quite interesting, because people went to Becky about this on the Kinda Good Kinda Beck YouTube channel, and Becky responded to it by calling Amberlynn Reed a liar. Are you going to respond to Amber's claims that you didn't take her bleeding seriously? Everyone took it seriously. She didn't listen to any of us. She's the one who let fear get in the way. There's no making her do anything, not even her current partner. I'm tired of talking about her and I want to move on. That night she went to the er, uh, year at first I didn't take her seriously because everyone knows how she is, she herself has said she has been a hypochondriac. As soon as I realized how bad it was which was literally like 20 minutes after she even asked to go, I was all for it because it truly was the scariest thing to have witnessed what I did that night. If only she wouldn't have ignored people who actually cared about her. I have a handful and a half of people who also told her she needed to go to the gynecologist. The reason I have not said anything is first off I want to be completely done with that part of my life. It's the past and does nothing for my present or future. Also I have been very sick, and before I got sick I was busy. I owe no one this explanation, but maybe she forgot, but we all did love and care about her. Seems it slipped her mind. Glad she recovered from that nightmare, but I am done with it all. I've got a lot of hard stuff going on already. But Amberlynn Reed isn't done. Turns out she had more answers to give during the AMA in question. Your responses about anything having to do with Becky is giving bitter X energy girl. No, it's giving I'm tired of the gaslighting and invalidation of the shit I went through, just because I'm Amberlynn Reed. Becky said your anxiety stopped you from going to the doctor she really did love you. Haha, ha, I did go to the doctor, and she knows I did. 
I went to the doctor in the same location as where my psychiatrist works. Anytime I went to a doctor, they ran tests, and then automatically just assumed the bleeding, white cell count, and pain was due to a UT or kidney stones. They were wrong. Always f***ing wrong. This is my story. My experience. The people invalidating it just for drama is f***ing disgusting. Imagine someone treating your mother or child like this. You all stay mad and stay pathetic. You're not being silenced. When you talk about someone, they can defend themselves. Nah, I'm being silenced, the minute I mention my ex, people either harass me about it, or tell me to shut up, or I'm called a liar, or they run to Becky. I can never share my experience about literally anything. The one thing that is prevalent throughout all three of those particular questions, statements, queries to Amber, is that in each response she gives, she is, well, attempting to make it into a listen and believe scenario, which after all these years on YouTube, no one can do when it concerns her. Why? because she lies through her teeth. She is well known for gaslighting, so of course she would use the term gaslighting, although as we now know, she doesn't really know what gaslighting is beyond the definition. She is known for exaggerating stories or having a distorted interpretation of the events. We know she's a hypochondriac. We know she will never listen to doctors. We know she changes doctors like she changes diets like she changes what she's about to put in her mouth. Now with that, we're going to move on to something else that happened during this month. We could talk about the additional series that she did. We could talk about the fact that that psychiatrist she loved so much. Yeah, that relationship turned out so well. The continued dumping of scratch art. The cleaning of the flat. The telling us what she's eating and her new weight goals and goals she's on something here, folks. But no, we're going to focus on something else because it's hilarious. Amblin Reed had a minor accident and we need to talk about it. I, I do have the clip, so I'm gonna play that right here. Oh, I'm just going for a walk. I don't know, my headspace is just not the greatest lately. And it's like, I'm so confused. I was loving vlogging, but now I'm in a low. So it's like vlogging just, I don't know. I just feel so disconnected. So as you can tell, you hear me say, okay. And I remember saying that as a way of like, okay, bitch, you got this. Now for the next part covering this entire debacle, I want to play a clip, a fairly lengthy one from a research stream that I did in September talking about this so I could help make this as good as possible on the Moisky Live channel. Okay, so we need to talk. Oh, the cankle. The fabled cankles. Oh my god. Now I know what you're talking about. I've seen that word floating around Twitter for a while. I was so excited. Cankle gates. For me, struggling with bipolar is always going to be something. You know, the medicine can only... Is Amber bipolar just so I, I don't get that wrong. I don't know, has she been diagnosed or does she tell someone that she is and just get the medication? Therapy can only do so much. Um, yeah, because the onus is always on you. Of course that can only do so much. The actual repair work is on you. And I've worked so oh, hard. Oh, Jay talks you into a Especially in the last year with my stamina moment. and my mobility. Sorry, moment. and Situation. I can cook, I can clean, I can shower, I can do all these things that it I is, wasn't Christina. able to do yes. years ago. I wasn't able to do these things. And... You guys know I have been, some of you say, smug about my mobility or that like... I mean, because we think sometimes you use a scooter. Um, I don't like, she's probably going to get crying now. I see now. people say things like, why is she so impressed with herself? Everyone can do these things. Well, I would say you should be impressed that you've managed it. But what would actually be genuinely impressive is if you commit to it. Say you did a half mile, yeah? Like you think you've said you've done before, Yeah. But you did that every single day. Yeah? Because then give it a month, you'd be able to take it up to two-thirds of a mile. Maybe within three months, you may even be able to do a whole mile without having to stop. That is progress. But you can only achieve it if you try. Right? If you actually do that, you'll get somewhere. The problem you've got is, it is impressive but it's not impressive because you give up on it so quickly. Now I know things hurt and that's that's the point. You don't go to the gym because it's fun. If you go to the gym and you're still smiling at the end of your session, you failed. 
If you start a session miserable and you end with a smile, you know you've put in the effort. Okay, this is what it's about. And when it comes to you going for a walk, people do mock you because you just do one walk and think that's it. You thought one point walking around your apartment was it. Like, that's not a walk. That's Amy's life journey workout. That's life by Jen workout, and her health is not doing well either these days. But Amy's life journey did that, and she did some stupid reps as well. Chris Chan did that crap as well with Coke cans in their boxes still. True commitment is pushing. And it's a battle, a genuine battle. You are never going to accomplish anything because you quit every single time. And you will continue to do that because honestly, you could actually do something. But again, you think the hard part is doing it. No, the hard part is doing it again and again and again and again. You do that, you'll, f <clears throat> you'll find this catharsis. Because you'll finally feel that accomplishment of actually putting in the effort. It'll cut into your valuable tea time, binge time, TV time, sleep time, YP wipe time, and every other thing you have going on that's a, um, a thing, deal, situation, moment, all your buzzwords. But I'll be honest, you could actually do something if you make the time for it. And you are the type, and I've said this many times with other people, you make every excuse in the world for why you can't do something, but you can never give anyone one good reason why you can do something. And that's what sets you apart. Because while you are a success in an aspect, you are a failure in another. And that failure is to yourself, with yourself. Because you've never act while you continually see, do remarkably selfish things, you never actually look after yourself. And you can't either. It's why you've gone from girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend. Suddenly magically in love and already moving with them. Because you can't look after yourself. So when people aren't impressed with you, they're not impressed or if they are impressed, they're only impressed momentarily because you actually did something for a change. Not because you did anything that could impact you positively in the future. If you really want to accomplish anything, everything is hard. If it's easy, it's not worth doing. How's that? Now after a little break in my TED talk, Amber finished the month with a video called I'm Done. It is 4 minutes 42 and Amber got a fair amount of flack before she made this video. Not least because she was somehow magically bedbound over rolling her ankle where she misplaced her feet in the dark on a spot where her feet shouldn't have been in the first place. Which tells you not only how far apart her feet are, but also tells you how self-conscious she is when she goes for a walk that she goes at night when she can barely see. Tomorrow will be two weeks since I fell. And I think a lot of you are like, why are you talking about this? You like seem like you're milking it. I'm just trying to share my experience of someone who is 500 pounds breaking their ligaments. Just imagine walking as a skinny person on torn ligaments, that shit hurts. Now imagine adding a 500 pound brick on top of that. It's a false equivalence and you are milking this. The weight of the individual does not change how much it hurts. You are trying to make it seem like it's greater because of how much you weigh. That's not the case. It is a whole other level of pain that I just... How would you know? You started your channel at 360 pounds. I don't think you know what it's like for someone who's skinny. Hell, I've rolled my ankle before. I've landed on my ankle before as well. It's quite uncomfortable. Do you know what I did? I walked it off. I have fought so hard to not be bedridden. Obviously, you guys don't see my day-to-day -day life in the sense of every single waking moment, but I use my bed for sleeping. But I do want to say one more thing because this is just it's become a lot here's the photo of where i fell in this circle there is like a little there is a hole a gap if you will in between the grass and the sidewalk where i fell now i'm going to show you this clip of my shoe from when i was in the hospital this is the shoe that went inside of that hole Your foot should have been nowhere near the edge, and you scuffed your trainer. Congratulations. You guys asked for the real me with my real experiences as someone who is morbidly obese. You guys tell me to stop putting on a facade, 
just be myself. And when I am, you guys say I leave out details of certain situations, which means I'm lying. What? That doesn't make sense. So now I find myself kind of oversharing in a way just to do the opposite of what you guys consider lying. So now that I'm oversharing, talking about my ankle, everything that happened surrounding it, you guys are calling me a liar. So which is it? You're lying. So we're going to start the month of September off strong with a tweet from Michael B. Petty. Foodie Beauty said ALR broke her cankle and started laughing. Amberlyn Reed is not happy about it. Underneath is an image of what looks like a community post. Yes, queen. Let's body shame like the classy queen you are, even though you preach about it constantly. Calling my ankle a cankle isn't going to make you any skinnier. You aren't better than me just because you weigh less. Remember that for next time you want to body shame someone. FYI, Amberlynn Reed spends the rest of this month trying to get back in Foodie Beauty's good books by constantly plugging her. It's just a shame, really, with these two feuding that they don't resolve it like everyone else and get in a boxing ring. Although I'm not entirely convinced either of them could reach the other person. Oh, and just because she's trying to get back in Foodie Beauty's good books, here's a community post. Within it, you'll notice a read-along being promoted because Amberlynn Reed wants to really get in touch with her book club community. Many of the comments are very positive because no doubt they have been regulated. Yes. Well, it didn't take long for Amber to pull a foodie beauty, her new senpai, by saying, I'm sorry, but I'm done with the read-along. If I find another avenue to do it on, I will let you know, but I am so beyond tired of things getting tainted for me. This was never a book club. Go back and look at the first post I even created about it. I called it a read-along, period. But so many people are having issues with how I am doing this even though there are zero rules for a read-along. To be honest, most read-alongs aren't even as conversation-based as much as I have been. A few shared opinions, sure, but not daily posts about each chapter. But somehow, it still wasn't good enough or I was doing something wrong or trying to prove how smart I am or I was being lazy with how I was doing the read-along, etc. Like, what? This is simply something fun. I thought we could do for people who are actually interested, but somehow people always seem to ruin everything for me no matter what it is. If you do not understand why I'm stopping this, be grateful that you never had people treat you this way or make you feel the way that I do now to the point of not even being able to hold a damn read-along anymore because there is so much negative energy surrounding it. I am choosing my mental health first. The very thing that people always tell me to choose above all. I will be continuing to read the book. Probably finish it tonight, honestly. Blah blah blah. Reach out over Instagram. Basically, someone spoiled the end for her and Dumbledore did in fact die. And this triggered ALR to such a degree that she chose the foodie beauty and her own way forward and flip-flopped within less than a day. The way she was doing it I found faulty because all she really had to do was set up a Discord server and if people then trolled it, then she could have found another server and only had those that showed a keen interest in the books a path to that area. Rebuild the community that she's so desperate to have, rather than the community she has created through a lifetime of poor decisions on the internet. You've been on this platform longer than I have, and you have the reputation that quite frankly will never go away. Not until you get your stuff in order. During the month of September, Apathetic Facts got their channel back, and when asked about this on Instagram, Amber said, I can strike them again and their channel would be gone. But mentally, it wasn't worth it, because I got relentlessly harassed by their supporters, which is also against TOS LMFAO. Another reason why is because if this got escalated to a courtroom, Amber and Reed couldn't afford that. Apathetic Facts had said, I swore she said last time I never ever wanted their entire channel shut down. With Apathetic Facts also saying, Once again Amber has emailed me threatening to copyright strike me and also said, You're taking my views and money from me. When I informed her that there is now record of her abusing the system, she quickly said, Well I don't plan on copywriting you because the drama from it is pathetic lol. Now coincidentally my channel has been reported and I'm in another appeals process with YouTube. Even after having three videos reinstated, the ample editing and YouTube consistently finding in my favor, my channel is still up. One thing I've mentioned in almost every month this year is that Amber's views are nowhere near where she plateaued. 100k views guaranteed for every video she did, where she'd go out and eat food, torrid holes, and all of it seeming very proactive, yet she was gaining weight, or losing weight to gain weight to lose weight. 
to gain weight again. It was a repetitive cycle. But now the views are two thirds of that, sometimes only a third of that. And yes, this is causing Amber to worry because she's got mouth to feed and clothes to try on once in a video for you to see so then she can go back to wearing the exact same outfit-ish in every single video with the one pair of leggings she wears. She went on her Instagram and she said that pretty much Becky didn't seem concerned, so therefore she was not concerned that she was bleeding for a bunch of years and basically straight out said that her girlfriend, her current girlfriend, would have forced her to go to the gynecologist, Becky didn't, and blamed her not getting medical care for her cancer onto Becky. This is complete BS. You're an adult, a grown adult who has admitted many, many, many times that you knew that something was wrong and now you're blaming it on your ex. My opinion is she is still raging at Becky for number one breaking up with her and stopping the course of true love of marriage. That's a lie, you know it. So this is required and relevant because we need the context because Becky responded to Amber Lynn's comments about this. Turns out Becky didn't really want to be involved, but Amber kept on dragging Becky's name, so Becky had no choice. I'm going to play more Karina's video because Becky clapped back by saying the following. I'm not ignoring it. I've been very busy. This is very new. Then somebody had asked Becky, like, get a backbone, defend yourself. Maybe Rafe needs to step up since she has a backbone. I've been very busy. I will deal with it. Also, Rafe has nothing to do with this or Amber. Then here are some comments that Becky has been liking. I mean, if she likes these comments, she obviously read them and agrees with them. Becky, please know this was not your fault that Amber didn't go to the doctor emergency room. That grown narcissistic woman child can spend $3,000 a month on takeout, can't get an Uber or a ride from someone else to the doctor or ER. Give me a break. Enough of her gaslighting. I'm sorry for what she is saying about you. Please do not blame yourself for anything she is saying. You went above and beyond for her and she is not very nice for not only not appreciating what you did for her, but for putting blame on you. I'm happy you got away from her. Keep working on yourself and learn your worth. Keep in mind that this person said a bunch of really nasty things about Amber and Becky liked it. So Becky agrees with uh, certain negative comments about Amberlynn, right? For the first half of September 2022, Amberlynn Reed was mostly bedbound, something she is all too familiar with. But this time, of course, because of Kenkelgate. She had announced via community post that she has created a new Instagram account and has made new YouTube content. She'll be starting a new series on her channel of hot topics, stories about her, tea about others, and advice from her, which includes sex stuff. It was a tiny pink vibrator with a engagement ring wrapped around it. Like, it was like, say this is the vibrator, it was like on it, like that. And she looked at me and said, will you have sex with me for the rest of my life? And everything and anything else, nothing is off limits. So send her whatever you want to talk about. She will only be choosing topics and questions. So I guess some things are off limits if you're not gonna do videos on them, I guess. Hmm, interesting. With someone pointing out, Amber, I just won't share my personal life and information anymore. You guys are too mean. Also, Amber, ask me anything. Nothing is off limits. Now, there's a bit of a gap between the last video you saw of Amber and Reed and the one you're about to see. One with a torrid hole, which is boring, but you're going to see a clip of it anyway. Looks to me that this is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I was hoping for something super tight, which is unfortunate. Looks to me that this is... Whoa, whoa, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Is that four? Looks like a four. Is that the size? Do forgive me. For a second there, my eyes were att were attracted to this number here. And I thought maybe she was giving us the wrong size. And I look at it and think, fam, you could fit like six Omegons in that. Oh, is it 4XL? Oh, is that a shirt or a onesie? And the second one, episode two of So Raw. Get it up for you guys, but your girl's tired. Is it true that you told Becky you wouldn't talk about her if she didn't talk about you? So this is actually the final time I will talk about Becky. I know I have said that before, but I'm just going to be as honest and candid as I can. No, this is not my choice. I couldn't care less if Becky spoke about me. She could speak about me in every single one of her videos and I would not care. She doesn't want me speaking about her, which fine, that's great. 
but yeah i'm cutting it off there because honestly she didn't need to continue explaining the next five years or the past five years or blah 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 i actually don't care any excuse to then mention somebody who does not want to be mentioned that you keep mentioning maybe not in video form on youtube but you certainly do on the instagram when people ask you take the bait you swing and well you get clapped back because of my weight. Honestly, I, I do have a fear of losing viewers because of success. And that's really sad and I shouldn't feel that way. I shouldn't have this like heavy feeling on my chest of like, oh my God, so do I choose health or do I choose, you know, money? Because I need to put a roof over my head. I need to put food in my fur baby stomach. So do I choose health or do I choose career? Health, Amber, you choose health. I said this in last year's end of year review. I have in fact said it in Content Constables on you. If you changed, genuinely and truly changed, went on a weight loss journey and turned it all around, you would become a legitimate inspiration. You really would, but you refuse to put in the hard work required. You seem to have chalked up success as weight loss and keeping it off. You're right, but you've had a different kind of success and you've also latched onto that, where by being bigger, by doing mukbangs, by sitting, eating, trying things on and not really accomplishing much, Dunking on other people, you get views. Controversy does in fact yield a positive outcome for many people, but it is short-term gains. Long-term success, which is what many of your type do not think about, comes from a lot of hard work. And the only kind of hard work you could ever do would be the kind that genuinely changed you. Something which you are not capable of because you are far too self-centered and selfish. You at the end of that clip I showed mentioned your fur babies. You actually ranted and raving about how important they were shortly after that little bit ended. But I cut it off because reality is, they don't require as much as you. Their vet bills are nowhere near as expensive as your repetitive hospital visits and many prescriptions. Now next on the agenda, Amberlyn Reed went for Rich Lux. Rich Lux had said he was done with her, as far as supporting her goes. But she's decided, time to clap back, time to get some Lux and Rich had a response for it. Oh, girl, I'm back from the disability office with my Birkin bag. Eat it up, girl, the queen. Amberly Reed came for me. I am not, I am not, I am not on disability. And you spreading false information like this is totally against TOS, tacos, of the South. Speculating on government-ish medical stuff and my finances is super low. The only other things of note that happened during this month was the belief that perhaps Amber was going to take reaction channels to court, but she hasn't got the money for it, or the fact that she changed the video title from thyroid cancer pancreatitis side effects price and ozembic blah 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 um, to risk of thyroid cancer pancreatitis side effects price is ozempic still working? We know the answer is no on that front and we also know it costs an arm and a leg. You could use that money instead of wasting it on a shortcut buying better healthier food. I guess with all of that out of the way we should now just jump straight in to October 2022. This has been a ball lake. Smash the like. You guys have wanted it. You guys have been wondering, where's your next Lego? Got it. It's the globe. Wifey got me this. Okay, you guys. So I wanted to open her with you. So what I like to do is I like to get just like a little container. Opening the book. I am sorry to disappoint, but I'm actually not going to be starting it right now. I just wanted to organize it, get it ready. Three things. Yes, first, this is how Anne Boleyn started the month of October. Second, I could have sworn you were a flat earther. And third, you opening, organizing, and then quitting is your cycle in Lego form. During the month of October, there was some speculation. Speculation that Amberlyn Reed and YP Wifey had broken up. I saw it via just saying, with many people saying, maybe speculated, mm. but she's featured in some vlogs with photo evidence of this. When Amberlyn did the video, I'm gaining weight plus CT scan update which is the very video I just showed you. But then we also know Amberlynn Reed films things, well, a certain level of distance in time. So I have no idea when this is. On the 8th of October, Amberlynn Reed uploaded a video titled Traumatizing Hospital Experience. She does, by the way, continue building her Lego in this. 
but I want to focus on the part that was most replayed throughout the whole video. So I just got out of the hospital. I woke up with really bad pain on my left side in my back and when I breathe in it's like this sharp pain and it feels horrible. I called my doctor just to make an appointment but they said there's no available appointments and with your symptoms you need to go to the ER. I ended up going to the ER. They're glad that I did because when you have symptoms like that, especially because it felt like I was also short of breath, they gave me an EKG as you can still see. I haven't taken any of them off. I also have some on my stomach and thankfully the EKG was perfect. I also got my blood taken, which I have a whole story with that. Long story short, they're really glad that I went in because the symptoms are, you know, scary. But since everything looked normal, turns out I just have like a strain. Now this all seems standard stuff so far, but Amber had mentioned and blood issues. This is where her own comments, as they usually do, call BS on her nonsense, by the way. While the hospital is glad she turned up, she really does sensationalize her own, like, presence. Like, her being there is a blessing. She is the messiah. I was walking and I had my IV. This situation type deal, it's not an IV anymore, but I had the IV and all of a sudden, as I'm walking, I heard something fall and I didn't know what it was. And then I just felt this hot feeling go down my arms and I looked and the freaking IV fell out of my arm and I was gushing blood all over me all, oh my god it was all over the floor and the way that they reacted was so calm so collected it was like blood was just everywhere now with all these health scares going on i'm sure you all remember not so long ago amber and reed had a cancer scare it was certainly a low moment for amber and a great big change happened in her life because of it not wait though the one thing you would have thought she might have prioritized to at least seem like she was trying to improve her health enough to give it a fair chance, her body that is. While something 200% worse than that has cropped up everyone, it is totally not clickbait. Something bad happened. I'm scared. Uploaded on the 10th of October 2022. Okay, so I just got out of the doctor. I was supposed to have my doctor's appointment tomorrow, but it became like kind of an emergency moment. Thankfully I was able to see my doctor today. I'm gonna have to explain everything. I have other personal things going on in my life right now besides. I know like people have been saying I seem so unhappy and stuff. It's just, there's a lot of things that I'm not sharing. And she even said that she's like, you you know, show signs of possibly having a blood clot in your lungs. So they should have done that, but they didn't. And something actually was found in my x-ray. And for some reason at the hospital, they didn't tell me. Part of my lung, part of my lung is collapsed. No lie, the video, ha, it took 15 minutes of an 18 minute video to get to that point. And I cropped out so much pointless bump about, oh, I don't share things with you. I don't tell you things and moment things and like moment. Moving on to the next one, a CT scan. I got more bad news admitted into hospital vlog from October the 16th, 2022. Be forewarned, I know I've been emotional in probably the last like 100 videos of mine. No, <laughs> um, I went to my CT scan and I was nervous. I was scared, you know, the whole bit. Um, I was expecting a different outcome, but while I was there, they noticed I was short of breath by walking just like a short distance. And while they did the CT scan, they didn't automatically notice something wrong with my lungs. They actually called the radiologist. I was admitted to the ER. Um, I talked to like the actual doctor. That's when things went downhill, for sure. A lot of cancer talk. On the exact same day, Amberlynn Reed also uploaded, I was misdiagnosed again. But I'm going to quickly show you something else that I found amusing. Courtesy of Chips Ahoy Lynn, the ad. Underneath Amberlynn Reed, July 2016, Destiny's 21st birthday surprise and eating healthy. Shape your fupa. That seems appropriate. I know what it really means in this context, but ha <laughs> lol. All I can do is stay as positive as I can. I know there's people out there going through worse things, but right now this is my worst. Right now it feels pretty rough. I just need a little bit of like kindness and patience and gentleness, really. If you want gentleness and kindness, I'd highly recommend not being on the internet, but this wasn't why I showed you the I was misdiagnosed again video. There was another clip worth looking at. So I just got out of my doctor's appointment. <laughs> 
got the paperwork to go to the radiology and schedule a CT scan of my actual chest because last time it was just lungs. I don't even remember what I was saying, but I just want to say thank you guys so much for just like the kind words and the messages. Like <laughs> it means the world to me because more positivity, more good vibes to my body. And I know that stress equals stress on the body. And I don't want that. We need to like treat my body well. Um... <laughs> we could have spoken about how the ER had suggested it could have been one thing. Tests proved it was another thing which was a different clip entirely, but I just wanted to focus on your overinflated ego. There is one more video I'd like to show you, but also a community post. I'm gonna to go to the community post first though, because the video, well, I don't need to play any clips from it. Add more uniqueness, perfectly said. That is all I want. Taking my videos only hours after I upload it every single time, editing out a few words and editing in the few words is not allowed on YouTube. Before I strike, Bottle. I made sure to see if what I was doing was in good faith and it was. Bottle is the second person I've ever striked in the 10 years I've been on YouTube. I have learned more about YouTube striking etc since last time and I'm not going to strike Bottle again because I do not want their channel to be taken down and I don't want them to stop making the content they enjoy. I simply want them to make their videos more unique. Create something that isn't just my newest video over again with a few extra clips thrown in or out. It isn't fair and it isn't fair use, period. One of the main modes of contention with this is, you strike without reaching out. We creators have a facility to do such a thing, in fact. You can send messages. Creators can be reached out to via DM. If you are reasonable in your approach and ask with kindness in your heart, being the empath you are, that shouldn't be overly difficult. You might find people like Bottle might well have given some consideration to altering the video so it falls within fair use. You silly bitch. The final video is called Nekokado caused me to get hate, getting back with my ex and meeting Feline. And to be honest, the most replayed part is this. No one would ask. What? Are you being genuine? Are you being genuine? Like, are these your actual thoughts? Or are you also putting a character on? Okay. Like, I know you have your troll in. Mm -hmm. You put your character on. You do your thing. And then sometimes you're authentic, mm -hmm. just genuinely you. Mm -hmm. Is it the same with them? Right. So I asked Feline this question because I was curious what she would ask because she knows all about the reaction channels, trust me. And her question is, are you guys genuine? Because she has heard me watch reaction channels in the past and sometimes they just sound dumb. It's like, are you really that dumb? Like, do you actually think this way? Or is it like a character because you know that this is what your channel is? Like, are you that nitpicky because you have to be? Are you that extra because you have to be? I feel like I've missed something here in this month. If I remember, I'll put it in November. So opening the month of November, we go to a community post from Amberlynn Reed. Regarding the heart attack situation during my live stream, I was being ironic in the way that reaction channels are, especially pulpy syntax, to give an example, where they talked very negatively about my lung issues and health issues in general. I constantly talk about sympathy and how reaction channels have zero sympathy for me and Chantel. I was purposely doing it, purposely acting like them. That's why I sat there silent and said I was looking for my sympathy bone. The way that I assume people would react towards reaction channels is the very way people came out and stuck up for Narc Alert. I'm glad that people did stick up for her. It's a shame that people lose that respect when it is reaction channels doing the whole oh well about her lung it's her fault. Or making jokes about my dangling lung. Or throwing cancer in my face. The list can go on. I without a doubt should have made my point in a different way because trust me I am not that cold hearted bitch. I wanted to act like the very people who react to me daily and I did it in poor taste and at someone else's expense and for that I'm sorry. I disagree with what I did and how I let my pride to prove a point distract me from who I really am and how I truly wanted to respond. I think the main issue with you responding to any of them is the fact that they will instantly play victim if you clap back hard enough. But also because you've clapped back you've given them free content. Congratulations. There was a fair amount of controversy concerning the Happy Halloween livestream where she made the heart attack remarks, which was, let's face it, with no level of irony considering she has gone on about her own health concerns for a while now. October was littered with hospital videos. 
This in turn, while she's preaching about being kind, was responded to by many people. She herself responded to some of them, Karina Kaboom being a more notable one, Nark Alert getting, as you know, mentioned there, having responded as well, trying to decide whether or not she's a narcissist or not. The answer is yes, you don't need a video to work that out. So rather than go through that where people had legitimate gripes and others just latched onto it because cha-ching, we're going to skip ahead to a come to Walmart with me haul and keto update because apparently she's not on Ozempic anymore. Ozempic? Bic? Ozem whatever it's stupidly expensive pick. Yeah. Now she's done, as everyone knows, all the main diets before, so I'm sure it'll work this time. We have uh, some pork chop moment, a broccoli moment, some eggs with a little bit of cheese moment. I just wanna say, keto is honestly, I actually like it. I wasn't expecting to, but it's not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. And I noticed that it's actually making me like meat more. Couple things of interest that I noticed. Firstly, you only seem to chew on one side of your mouth. Second, I thought you were allergic to eggs. And third, I thought you were vegetarian. You can't be keto and be vegetarian. You can, but it's hard. Well, that certainly explains why you're not doing it then. Now you do go on to explain why you do keto, why it's so important to you, and why you would like to be vegetarian, none of which is remotely interesting to me. So instead we'll move on. What you now see on the screen is one of those weird little trend videos where you look as ugly as you can and then make yourself have a nice little glow up moment, right? So Amber's done this, but I had to remove the audio because music. I know, peak excitement, but I just wanted to throw it in there as a nice little eh moment, sorry, moment, before we move on to the next bit. Actually, we're not done with that clip because there's more of them. I'll show you just one though. The reason why is because I want to latch onto a point. If you have to put that much effort to think you look good, it speaks volumes about how ugly you are to begin with. Was that harsh? Now, rather amusingly, Amberlynn Reed was actually banned from TikTok for making fun of herself. I would want to refrain from laughing, but I'm going to laugh anyway. Ha ha ha. I know. That's the most energy you've ever seen come out of my mouth. Amberlynn is trashing her ex, Becky. I think we should all have a moment of silence for Amberlynn trashing her ex, Becky. It's so shocking. So after harassing Becky for over a year, Becky actually making a response video to her and promising to never talk about Becky again. And she's also trashing Foodie Booty's marriage. Now look, for Amberlynn Reed, who literally invited a stranger off the internet to live with her while she was still living with her ex, Becky, it's amazing to me. So she says, for Celine, my girlfriend, Venmo's me all the money for the bills and the rent. You know, she pays her way. She gives me, you know, half the money for everything. And Amber says, well, I'm not used to having anyone pay her way. She immediately follows that up by saying, no shade. <laughs> Your ex-partner got into a terrible car crash. Becky, I talked about this. Becky got into a terrible car crash on Halloween night to know that, to know the person totaled their car, to know they're going through a hard time because Becky keeps posting about it and still try to drag her down amazing just leave Becky alone I feel so redundant how many times have we all said it leave Becky alone earlier I mentioned Ozempic and why Amber's on keto well not why but she is while also being allergic to eggs on the 13th of November 2022 Amber uploaded a video titled the truth about Ozempic days two to three vlog okay you guys so I want to talk a little bit about Ozempic I feel like in my live stream I was kind of blindsided. I wanted to talk about it when I was ready. A lot of people were asking in the chat, which I understand because I stopped talking about it. When I first started Ozempic, which is something my doctor recommended to me because I had heard so many good things about Ozempic. She, you know, obviously she knows my health and my health history. You know, I was diagnosed with gallstones from rapid weight loss. I lost 89 pounds. I know those famous 89 LBs. Rapid weight loss is considered one to two pounds a week. So I got gallstones from my rapid weight loss. But anyways, she was like, do you show any more signs of it? Like when's the last time you had an attack? And it made me realize, wow, I actually haven't had a gallstone attack. I've had maybe like one or two in the last three plus years, which is, she was like, let's put you on Ozempic. And if you ever feel like you have any, you know, know gallbladder problems you need to tell me and you're gonna have to get off of it and I I had a moment where I was like um can we just give it one more chance can we wait until I'm in pain one more time yes she prattles basically she came off Ozempic because of a gallstone attack I actually thought that was made up until I looked it up it's a thing all right good to know so we spoke about keto well some things never change 
because on the 16th of November 2022, while dated on nearly the 6th of November 2022, Anne Boleyn Reed quit keto because it is bad for her gallstones. But it's okay, everyone. In that video, eating a packet of Chips Ahoy, gallons of ice cream and takeout every single moment you can have it is totally fine. I wish you would just get to the point, Amber, where you say, I'm not on a weight loss journey anymore. I am just me. I'm just going to continually yo-yo bounce cycle and rinse repeat all of it for your viewing pleasure. So I can buy more crap from Torrid online because going to the shops is so pre-COVID. And why get a mobility scooter when someone can scoot it to my home? I want to say like a six hour period, but still. And I kind of regret ever doing it, to be honest. But I had a vlog up where I was like trying keto ice cream and I, I am not addicted to ice cream. I'm addicted to food. Like I am ordering out all of my food. Might be fat folks, but I just wanted to come on here while I'm editing this and let you guys know that. After that, you prattle on for a fair bit, but somewhere in there, and I couldn't find it, you mentioned not doing keto anymore. The reason why is because Amblin Reed partook in an activity called word vomit. The video is quite long. Of course she did. Here's some response word vomit for you. You speak about how people need to listen. Words need to be heard. People need to understand your struggle. Actions speak louder than words. Your actions for the many years you've been on YouTube are indicative of somebody who doesn't want to be heard. You want people to just simply accept. That's all you want. That is not how the internet works and it does not work with the community that you have cultivated. It has never been that way and will never be that way. Why? Because you will not make a change from the cycle. You won't try because anything that's difficult, you won't do. If your gallstones need removing, have them removed. Go to the vets and have the operation. It isn't rocket science. You blew so much on Ozempic pointlessly and accomplished nothing. It is of course your life to do with what you want, but to expect or demand that everyone respect your decisions when you are showing just how useless you can be in this situation and then fobbing it off on an addiction or a disorder or these random moments you can't help but bleat on about while you are binging on things. But it's binge eating disorder, everyone. Binge eating disorder is indicative of someone who makes every excuse for why they can't do something and fails to give so much as one good reason why they can do something. Now we've reached a cutoff point where I can't add too much more to this video because I have to upload it at some point near the end of November because YouTube. There is a lie Amber was caught out in. She and Wifey are both responsible in this respect concerning her glorifying an ED on TikTok, which is why she got banned in the first place. I said making fun of herself, sure, let, let, let's call it that. As far as what happened goes, you can't keep skirting around this and pretending nothing happened or that what you did was totally fine. People on TikTok and the TOS is much more sensitive. Now I'm going to finish with one last video from Amber. The video is titled, I'm over 500 pounds again. But the best part is the date at the start of the video, November the 8th, 2022. Are you pre-recording content for Christmas so you can make sure you pay your taxes on time? Or are you just building up a stockpile because you also know December's the best month? Or are you this lazy now? Isn't she going to therapy? Like, it's clearly not working. It's a lot to unpack. There's a lot going on. It does not happen overnight. It does not happen in a couple months. You know, 31 years of, of damage is hard to repair. So for my weigh-in, 502.4. So that means I'm very, very sad to say I am back in the 500s. When it comes to the year of 2022 for Anne Boleyn Reed, I took the liberty of asking Twitter, with the prevailing theme being boring. A regurgitation of every cycle ever done before. Never learning lessons. Simply being told to do something and doing the opposite. Blaming it on any disorder that she can conjure things that aren't even real machinations of her own mind and asshole. Desperately trying to cling on to some form of popularity akin to what she used to have because her views are starting to go down. She plateaued and is now on the downward slide. So manufacturing drama is her go-to. Lying another. Trying to get in with people like Chantel after falling out, but throwing her name about because Chantel's name generates enough controversy and attention that perhaps more people will go her way. Amber is exploring alternative means of making money and still trying to keep her relationship where she even docks her girlfriend anyway a complete secret. 
As far as productivity goes, she has been her least active this year, and I don't see it changing next year, unless she finds a way to be more energetic or make an actual change in her life for the benefit of herself, which will never happen. To those that have watched both parts and made it this far, thank you. The aggravation that one and another, thank you by the way, the owner, we went through to do this was a ball ache. I hope you enjoyed. Smash the like. And we might even do one next year.